Okay, so we can start. There are 60 questions, so let's start. Number one, HPV replicates in the following cells. So type your answers on the chat. I'm seeing majority of you guys are saying B. So the correct answer is C. If you can remember, when we were doing HPV, we mentioned that how HPV replicates. We said they're going to be an abrasion or breakage of the skin. And when this happens, the virus is going to enter the skin, isn't it? So the basal cells, which is the answer, are found in the epithelium. And these are the ones where HPV re replicates. I don't know why you said melanocytes, but melanocytes has nothing to do with HPV. Or is it because the melanocytes are found in the epithelium? Okay. So the key thing here is replication. Okay. So the answer is basal cells. Columnar cells can't be the answer because you know columnar cells are found um, lining the GI tract. So HPV doesn't affect the GI tract. HPV mainly affects uh, skin, the reproductive system. And then we have HPV. Remember we have HPV1. We have HPV, the different serotypes. Do you remember 11? We have 16 and 18. Do you remember them? So you have to go look at that. But the answer here is basal cells. Number two. In which of the following SARS-CoV-2 viral structures are mutations most frequently detected? Answers? So I'm expecting three answers, yes. B, good. So everyone got this. So it's B. We haven't done with you guys coronavirus, but we've been told you've done, you've, you've done it in class. So remember S protein, which is called the spike protein. It's the one that interacts with the S, S2 receptor on the human cells. So that is where we're going to have the mutations that occur. So remember the mutations at that time, we had the Omicron virus, the... Delta variant, okay? So this one was direct. Number three, nasopharyngeal carcinoma is associated with which virus? E, good. So here, Bet I just circle like that. So here, here it's E HHV4. So HHV4, we know it's oh sorry, sorry. So when I move this, it changes. Oh, okay. HHV4 um is EBV virus. You remember Epstein Barr virus, and it can also cause. It causes nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Why are the others wrong? HHV3, what does HHV3 cause? Chickenpox or the shingles. Measles, nothing to do with nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Rubella causes congenital rubella syndrome and all other symptoms, okay? Then HHV8 is associated with Kaposi sarcoma, okay? So here the answer is HHV4. Good. Okay, number four. One of the following is a professional antigen presenting cell. Select one. Okay. So 
I've seen majority of you said E. So yes, E is correct. So you have also done this in immunology. Okay, the prof professional antigen pro presenting cells. So T cell, we know it's a, it's part of the adaptive immunity. Natural killer cells, it's a part of the innate immunity. Basophils, this deals with the um, allergic responses, same to eosinophils, mostly parasitic inf inf parasitic infestations and allergies. Okay, so professional antigen presenting cells, macrophages. Okay, so what happens is they usually present antigens via MHC class two. I'm sure you did this in immunology, and then they activate the T cells. Okay. Okay, number five, teratogenic viruses include all the following except. Yes. E, yes, rhinovirus. We were saying teratogens. So what are teratogens? Teratogens are viruses, it can be viruses, it can be bacteria that cause malformations or congenital malformations during the birth process. So I've seen everyone has said E, that's correct, rhinovirus. So varicella zoster virus is a teratogen. Cytomegalovirus is a teratogen. Rubella virus, we know it causes congenital rubella syndrome as we have done. And then parvovirus B19 is a teratogen. It causes hydrospitalis. You remember what we were doing? Okay. The target cells for hepatitis A is mm -hmm. answers in the chat. I'm seeing D, I'm seeing A. Any other answer? E. Okay, so if you can remember when you are doing hepatitis A, hepatitis A is a fecal oral virus. If you compare this with other viruses, like hepatitis D, sorry, hepatitis. So the only fecal oral hepatitis viruses, hepatitis A and E. Hepatitis B, C, and D are spread through. Um, so it's similar to HIV, so blood donations, sexual intercourse, sharing of needles or syringes, all those, okay? Transplants. So, and from the word hepatitis, hepatitis means inflammation of the liver and it is hepatitis A. As much as yes, it is fecal oral, but the target cell is, we call it the Kufa cells. Kufa cells are the liver macrophages, okay? So, what happens is the hepatitis A virus goes, targets the hepatocytes. So the hepatocytes are the cells within the liver. And then the Kufa cells are the macrophages that will come and destroy this hepatitis A virus. So the answer is Kufa cell. Okay. Monkeypox virus, select one.
D, 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 good. Transmitted through direct contact. Good. So let's eliminate a small DNA genome. Why is this wrong? Monkeypox is a large DNA genome. You remember, pox viridae, the largest viruses. And then causes paralysis in over 50% of infected persons. This is not true. It does not, monkeypox is not associated with any of paralysis. Destroys anterior horn cells by producing cytolytic toxin. So what virus are we describing in choice C? Which virus goes to the anterior horn cells? Polio, good. So it's polio. You remember? Polio, good. Replicates in the nucleus. We said all DNA viruses replicate in the nucleus except pox virus. Okay. So remember how I told you to, as a mnemonic, pox is out of the box. So you remember all pox viruses replicate in the cytoplasm. Okay, then it's spread through direct contact. That is true. So if you have direct contact with the lesions of the monkeypox, any bodily fluids, respiratory droplets, or contaminated material, for example, bedding, or these surfaces. Okay. One of the following is a feature of HIV. Answers. Some are saying B. Some are saying D. I'm seeing conflicting answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's eliminate HIV. Haploid genome. So haploid means it is only carrying one copy of the genome. No, we know HIV carries two copies. So it's a diploid genome. Double-stranded RNA virus. Is HIV double-stranded really? HIV is single-stranded, so this is wrong. DNA genome, we know HIV retrovirus. It is RNA. It's an RNA virus. Choice E, double-stranded DNA genome. We've already said it's single-stranded RNA genome. So the answer is replicates in the nucleus. Okay. So we haven't done with you guys uh, HIV. We're going to do it. In fact, that will be the next one that you're going to do. But if you know the pathophysiology of HIV, it usually integrates its DNA in the host genome. And this integration and replication usually occurs in the nucleus. Okay. So choice D. Number nine, the following is true about rabies virus. Which one is true? So here you have to know how how As I was saying, so B, vaccinating dogs reduces cases in humans. So you have to, as I said, prevention and control, you have to know how the virus is spread. And in this case, we know that rabies virus is spread via dog bites, a bite by a dog, an infected dog. Okay, let's go to choice A. Rabies responds well to rivabirin. We said no, we use, this is for another virus. So ribavirin, for rabies, how do we treat? Remember we said 
post exposure prophylaxis. You remember? And then transmitted fecal orally, we know that is wrong. It's transmitted via bites or a scratch from the saliva of the dog or any other host, the mongoose, some cats, all those bats. Uses anterior grade axonal transportation to reach the CNS. This is for polio. So here is the, here, anterior grade. So does it use anterior grade or retrograde? It's a retrograde. Retrograde, good. Fatality is less than 10%. What is the fatality of rabies when you have symptoms? Ninety years, so it's almost a hundred percent. Okay. Okay. Number ten, target cells for polio virus is. Mm -hmm. Answers in the chat. Oh, I've seen a question here by someone. They're asking, can you please clarify on the modes of axonal transport? Okay. So we have two types of axonal transport to reach the CNS. We have anterograde and retrograde. So anterograde, if, see if I can draw. Oh yeah, can you see that? So, so this is a neuron, it's an axon. Sorry, sorry for my poor drawing skills. Okay, so this is part of a neuron. We know how a neuron looks like. This is the dendrites. Sorry, this is the cell body and the dendrites. And then this is the axon. So what happens is axonal transport is usually from this side to this side, isn't it? We know that is the normal transport. So forward, basically it's moving forward. Forward, we call that anterograde. If it moves backwards, we call it retrograde. Okay. So the direction, the direction for anterograde is from the cell body to the axon terminal. And direction for retrograde is from the axon, axon terminals to the cell body. It's going back to the neural cell body. Okay, have you understood? So for pathogens like rabies, they use retrograde transport. Okay. So here for poliovirus, everyone knows this is motor virus, motor neuron, sorry. That is okay. Okay. One of the following is a characteristic of pox virus. Select one.
Okay. So E E E good replication in the cytoplasm. So this is this is direct. All DNA viruses replicate in the nucleus except Fox viruses. So A. So eliminate this. This is for polio. Causes paralysis fifty percent. The same. The same question. Have small, large, non enveloped. Okay. Number twelve. The most appropriate sample for detection of SARS-CoV-2 IgG antibodies is select one. Some are saying E, some are saying A, some are saying E. So I caught you. So remember, they have asked antibodies. Antibodies. So highlight that, antibody. If you were to detect SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA, the answer would be nasopharyngeal swab. There's also reports of rectal swab, okay? But if we are detecting antibodies, the answer is blood, okay? The answer is blood, okay? Have we understood? Antibodies are what we fight against the SARS-CoV-2 antigen. So that is found in blood. The most appropriate specimen for detection of hepatitis A antibodies, to same principle, here we're detecting antibodies. What will the answer be? E serum, good. So blood, but specimen of choice to detect viral DNA, sorry, for hepatitis A is viral RNA would be stool because it's spread fecal already. Liver biopsy, not really done. In case you want to do a liver biopsy, you want to assess the nature of damage of the liver. The protein covering the nucleic acid in all viruses is called So this one is easy. Capsid, isn't it? Good. So why is the answer not envelope? So an envelope is the one that is found in only enveloped viruses, okay? And it usually surrounds the capsid. Capsid is just to cover the nucleic acid. So either DNA or RNA, and then the outer covering is the, the envelope. Then tegmentum, it's only found in enveloped viruses and it surrounds the capsid. Capsule, you've never had this on viruses. Capsule is a term used in bacteria. We're going to learn about that, okay. One of the following statements about dengue is true. I'm seeing A, I'm seeing D. Any other answer? 
sin E sin D. So let's let's start from the uh, from the bottom. Has been reported outside Africa. Has not been reported outside Africa or Asia. So this is false. So we said that dengue and other boviruses are found within the tropics and uh, subtropical regions. So they are also there. Okay, in South America. So E is wrong. Is an alpha virus of the Toga virus family? Is it? Is it an alpha virus? It's a flavivirus. Okay, not alpha virus. So take note of that. Causes hemorrhagic symptoms in over 50% of infected people. So it's not over 50%, usually a, subs, a small subset of people. It's transmitted by the soft stick Onithodorus motoba. No, we know dengue is transmitted by mosquito, Aedes mosquito, not ticks. So number one is correct, has no specific antiviral agent. Okay. It has no specific antiviral agent. Remember we said for dengue, there's no specific treatment. We usually treat the symptoms. So management is supportive, you know, giving fluids, and then you have to manage the complications. The two main compli what are the two main complications we said for dengue? The two lethal complications for dengue. We said dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome. Hemorrhagic fever is where we said you have a fever and then you bleed. Okay, bleeding and plasma leakage. And then dengue shock syndrome is when now you start having end organ damage. Plasma leakage leading to circulatory collapse. Okay, so go check on that. One of the following statements about herpes virus is true, select one. C, good, it causes lifelong infections. So let's eliminate number A. Non-enveloped, we know herpes is enveloped. Carrier and RNA genome, no, it carries double-stranded DNA. Some are easily cured using antiviral therapy. We said um, antiviral therapy like a cyclovir doesn't really cure, but it is used to manage. You can never cure herpes virus because we know that it stays latent and then when you're at an immunocompromised state it becomes reactivated okay belongs to baltimore group five no so it belongs to baltimore group one so group one is where there is the dna viruses so causes lifelong infection yes because of how it remains latent okay we said Happy simplex one, where does it remain latent? In which ganglion? And then happy simplex two, I mentioned this. One Most is commonly... trigeminal, trigeminal, two okay. is sacral. Good, and two is sacral, very good. One of the following statements about hep human papilloma virus, hepatitis B and HTLV, human T lymphocyte virus is true. Okay. Good. I'm seeing most of you have said. You've said. Oh, sorry. This is the question. B. They are all associated with development of cancers. So let's eliminate the choices. We have vaccines are available for all. Is it true? HPV has a vaccine. Hepatitis B has a vaccine. 
but is there a vaccine for HTLV? There's no. So you see, they're all transmissible by respiratory droplets. I mean, none of them are transmitted by respiratory droplets. So it's either sexual contact, blood, okay? Transplacental transmission is possible. Maybe hepatitis B, but for HTLV, it's not common. They are all treatable with antiviral agents. So HTLV has no antiviral agent. Associated development of cancers, we know that. So HPV, we, we are thinking of cervical cancer. Hepatitis B usually causes hepatocellular carcinoma, which is cancer of the liver. And then HTLV, HTLV, sorry, causes, we call it T-cell leukemia. It's a type of leukemia. Okay, good. One of the following statements about influenza, measles, and COVID-19 is true. Select one. All transmissible by respiratory droplets. Good. So if you are to eliminate, killed vaccines are available for each of them. We know that measles has live attenuated vaccine. Transplacental transmission is possible. Um, COVID, there have not been any cases of transplacental transmission. Measles, mm, rare, rare in rare cases. They are all associated with development of cancers. None of these cause any cancers. They are all treatable by antiviral agents. We said measles, we know measles has no antiviral therapy. Okay. One of the following viruses has been associated with the microcephaly. Zika, this is direct. So we know Zika causes congenital microcephaly. So basically the head, usually micro, micro means small. Cephaly is head, so small head. Okay. Number 20, the following viruses have a segmented genome except. Mm -hmm. So I feel for these viruses, knowing which virus is DNA, which virus is RNA, knowing which virus has a segmented genome, knowing which virus. So those ones, those are things that you should be reading daily so that you get to understand them because there's no set like formula. Okay, you can get these formulas from the internet, but there's no set way of remembering them. So you have to remember them, the naked ones, the enveloped ones. So it's you to practice every day, okay? So what is the answer here? Except. E, oh my God, I'm seeing very many answers. E, some are saying C, some are saying E, A. So the answer is C. Coronavirus is not segmented. Okay. So the segmented genome viruses are Bunya virus, Otomixoviridae. Otomixoviridae is influenza A. Arena virus, Riovirus. Riovirus is rotavirus. Okay. Sorry, kindly repeat the segmented ones. So Bunya viridae. So write them down. Bunya viridae. So Bunya viridae. Oh, there's a formula. Bora. So Bunya viridae, which the Rift Valley fever, Crimean Congo, 
hantavirus. Those are the bunya viridae. Then O is otomyxovirus. Otomyxovirus is influenza A virus. Then R is riovirus. Riovirus is, remember it's not rotavirus, it's, sorry, it's not retrovirus, it's riovirus, so rotavirus. Okay. And then the A is arena virus. Arena virus is the one spread by rodents, the Lassa virus. Okay, so corona is not segmented. Okay, thanks for the mnemonic. Uh, number 21. One of the following viruses is transmitted by rodents to humans. <laughs> I've just mentioned this. So Lassa virus, part of the arena virus. The commonest cause of cervical cancer. We go back to this chikungunya. We know that this is mosquito. SARS-CoV-2, SARS SARS-CoV-1, this is respiratory droplets, dengue, mosquito, Zika, mosquito. Common is cause of cervical cancer. So 6, 11, and 2 are non-oncogenic. They don't cause cancer. So we are remaining with 16 and 18. So between 16 and 18, which one is more common? 16, okay. 16 is more common than 18. Mm -hmm. 23, one of the following viral infections is transmitted by Anopheles mosquito. Select one. They should have put here malaria to confuse you guys. But the answer is Wanyong Nyong. They usually put their malaria. Because many people, if you see female anopheles, they run to malaria. Okay. Dengue, Zika, Aedes, mosquito. Ebola, it's not even transmitted by mosquito. This is by respiratory droplets. Sorry, not respiratory droplets, by fluids. So if you're in contact with bodily fluids. And then bab babesiosis. This is a parasite. Sorry, not a parasite, a protozoa. Babesia is transmitted by ticks. Ah, yeah. Complex spots are clinical features characteristic of which disease. This is very, very direct. And I remember when I was teaching, I, I emphasized complex spots. They're found inside the mouth, within the mucosa. Measles, very good. I'm so happy you guys remember. Uh, T cells form in the why do T cells form? E. So I'm seeing E, I'm seeing C. So so form here means to mature. Okay. So I remember I used to understand this is T cells, they are made in the bone marrow, then they go and mature. They go to school in the thymus. That is where they mature. Okay. But they're made in the, they're manufactured, they, they originate in the bone marrow. One of the following is true about bacteriophages. Select one. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing E, E, A. Mm 
So the answer is E. Have you guys done bacteriophages? Yes, so you guys should remember. All have a tail for injecting the genome into the host. Is it all? It's not all phages that have tails for injecting genome on the host. All have head carrying the genome. Do you remember the types of bacteriophages? So the specific one that integrates the genome into host cells, the lysogenic phages. Okay, I want you guys to go check on the bacteriophages. Have been licensed for treatment of drug resistant TB. This is not true. Can attack human cells when applied in high doses. This is not true. So go check on the different types of bacteriophages and their functions, but not all of them have a tail or a head. Okay. 27, one of the following statements about COVID-19 is false. Which one is not true? Mm -hmm. C, hydroxychloroquine is a drug of choice. So the reason they put this choice is during the first stages of COVID-19, around 20, 2020, there was speculation that hydroxychloroquine can be used to treat COVID. Because we know hydroxychloroquine is a drug of choice. It's used in malaria, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. But it's not the drug of choice. What is the drug of choice for COVID-19? Starts with an R. It's usually given to <clears throat> patients who are severely ill. Remdesivir, good. Antigenic drift is due to Epidemic drift is due to B, I'm seeing B, I'm seeing C. So we're yet to do with you, you guys. Did we do influenza really? Antigenic drift and antigenic shift. So the answer here is C, accumulation of gradual mutations. Okay, so if I was to mention the difference between antigenic drift and antigenic shift. So drift, from the word drift, So as I was saying, antigenic drift and antigenic shift. So let's start with drift. So from the word drift, to drift means to move away, is it? Moving away from something. So what happens in antigenic drift is there will be mutation. It's usually random and there's accumulation of the gradual mutations and they're usually random. So what happens is there's mutation in the hemagglutinin or neuraminidase genes. So usually these mutations are minor 
And what happens is they occur frequently, frequently and gradually. Okay. So the main outcome of this antigenic drift are epidemics. Epidemics are seasonal outbreaks. For example, in the month of July, there'll be a seasonal outbreak of influenza due to the cold season. Then next Ju July, another seasonal outbreaks. These are epidemics. But for antigenic shift, shift, to shift means to go somewhere else. Like if I tell you to shift. So in shifting, here we are changing the virus. Okay, we are changing the virus. It's going to be a new strain. What happens is there is reassortment of the RNA segments. Okay, it shifts totally. It totally shifts into a new viral strain. Okay, so what happens is this causes outbreaks and it's usually global outbreaks. We call them pandemics, like the way we had a COVID pandemic. Okay, that is due to an antigenic shift, not a drift. Shift is totally reass reassortment of the genetic material, which is the RNA. Okay. Have we understood? So mostly it can be caused by, let's say, human influenza and like swine flu influenza. Then it shifts and changes into another strain. Have we understood the difference? Okay. Number 29, which of the following bacteriophage structures is used for attachment? And nine E, good, so tail fibers. So the spike, spike are not even found in bacteriophages. The base plate, so the function of the base plate is to anchor the phage. So in anchoring the phage, when the genome is being injected, okay, so this is just provides support. The head carries genome, the tail, it's just a conduit, okay? for injecting the genome. So it's not used in any attachment. Attachment is the tail fibers. Then which of the following is most likely to cause bronchiolitis? Remember I said, if you hear the word itis, inflammation. So inflammation of the bronchioles. Mm -hmm. Answers? I'm seeing C. Any other answer? E, 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 yes. So the answer is E, RS, RSV. So why not missiles? You know, missiles, missiles most, you remember when you were saying complications of missiles, the most common one is pneumonia. It doesn't cause bronchiolitis. So terminal bronchioles. So missiles causes pneumonia rather than bronchiolitis. Mumps. We know the most common is ochitis, parotitis, ophritis in female, rotavirus, gastroenteritis, HHV3, this is chickenpox and shigella. 